Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The sound's a little loud on this, I think, if it can be turned down uh, just a little bit. But thank you to all of you for being here today. It really means a lot to me to be able to share this moment with you. I often say to our freshmen at their opening convocation that I wish I could give each one of them the gift of finding a purpose greater than themselves in which to invest their lives. Today, I am filled with gratitude to all of those who have allowed me to receive that gift in my own life. I'm grateful to the people of Oklahoma for giving me the opportunity to render public service for over 50 years, and especially for more than two decades here at the university, which has been my most satisfying experience in my entire life. Above all, I am grateful to all the members of the OU family, students, faculty, and staff who have shared a commitment to excellence in every way. I love and appreciate each one of you. I'm deeply grateful to my partner in life, Molly Shiborin, who has made so many contributions of her own to the university as she led the, in the creation of our religious studies program of the Institute for Quality Communities, which reaches out all across the state to cities and towns to improve the quality of life. And because of her commitment, OU has been selected as one of the 25 most beautiful campuses in America. Above all, she has been a constant source of strength for me. I wish and hope for every one of you, especially our students, you will find such a partner in your lives which to share all of life's great moments and all of life's challenges as well. The university has never in our history been more important than it is today. It is the guardian of intellectual freedom it is a place where we learn to think for ourselves. The university is a place where we connect to our past. It helps us understand who we are. This institution has helped to define what America is all about, a place where ability and tenacity and spirit and community help us all to realize our potential. The University of Oklahoma was founded by pioneers who had the courage to dream and the tenacity to realize those dreams. No institution is more important to our future. The university is the linchpin of our society because it is the point of contact between generations. It is at the university where the values, experiences, and collective wisdom of one generation are passed on to the next. If this does not happen at the university, it will not happen at all, and the values and wisdom of past generations will be lost. Because it is the point of contact between generations, the university is the greatest creator of intellectual energy and creativity in our entire society. Students and faculty members interact in the discovery of new knowledge, as well as in the discussion of the cur our current body of thought. As a place where learning occurs when commu through community, through direct personal interaction of faculty and students, the university, like this university, will never be obsolete. In an age in which we desperately need to develop the ability to think critically, and to interpret the mass of information inundating our society. It is vital that the university be preserved. Recently, I reread the comments that I made at the time of my installation as president. 
Among other things, I spoke of what I hoped we could accomplish together as a university family. I said over 20 years ago that I was convinced that together we could demonstrate that a public university could have an honors program that could match the intellectual challenge provided by the most well-endowed private institutions. I said I was convinced that together we could create here new initiatives to prepare our students to be leaders in the international environment in which they will live. I said that I was convinced that together we could demonstrate such a strong commitment to teaching and mentoring that our example would help all of American higher education regain something that it had lost. I said that I was convinced that together we could make diversity our strength and we could build a new spirit of community as an example to the rest of the country that we could learn how to argue and challenge each other without forgetting how to respect and to love each other. Because of you, because of the entire OU family, many of these dreams have already come true. Our faculty has never been stronger. Our students have never had greater potential. We've received national recognition even in the last few weeks, as we have never before, as one of the best public universities in the country. We have an extraordinarily talented leadership team ready and able to lead our university into the future. I have always understood that there would come a time when I should pass the baton to a new president. I have thought long and hard about what is best for our university. I have wanted the transition to occur when the university was at maximum strength. I believe that the right time has come. That is why I'm announcing today that I plan to retire as president of the University of Oklahoma, effective at the end of the school year, June 30th of next year, contingent upon the selection of my permanent successor. If a successor has not been named by that time, I will remain as president until a permanent selection is made so that there will be no gap in the university's leadership and no pause in our, former, in our forward momentum. Until that time, I pledge to continue to do my best to provide the kind of leadership that this great university deserves. Britain's poet laureate for many years, John Macefield eloquently wrote of the university as follows. And I hope we'll consider it carefully and especially those, not only our students, but our entire, and our entire family, our faculty, and our staff, so that we can realize the importance of the enterprise in which we're involved. Here's what John Macefield wrote. There are few things more enduring than a university. Religions may split into sect or heresy. Dynasties may perish and be supplanted. But for century after century, the university will continue and the stream of life will pass through it. And the thinker and the seeker will be bound together in the undying cause of bringing thought into the world. To be a member of these great societies must ever be a great distinction. Serving as your president has been the most rewarding period of my life. So many of you in this room have rubbed off on me. So many special friendships have been made. It's impossible for me to express my appreciation to you. Thank all of you for making it so rewarding. Because of you, as the chant says, our university will live on stronger than ever. Thank you all very, very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. As I look out on all of you, I have a full understanding of what it means to invest your life in some cause and in some institution far more important than yourself. Thank you again. Don't rush away. I know the members of the press are going to come up and I'll respond to their questions up on stage, but stay and visit with each other. This is a po an important moment for all of us in our community and a moment to share and to share with friends. But again, I, I can't tell you, I can't begin to express, and if I try to, it will be difficult for me, but I appreciate so much your being here at this moment and for us to be able to share it together. Thank you again, and we'll ask the press if they'll come up here and linger, visit, don't rush away, and I hope I'll get to see some of you before when we finish the press conference. So. We'll ask the press if they would come up here.